Military leader effects can give you a positive or a negative effect depending on RNG. It can also be leveled up by a battle and training. Once the rebuff fills, you have a well over 5% defense buff, but if you move, it will be cancelled. Once you defeat the country, press negotiate terms and seize 75% of everything and annex all the cities. Currently, I'm landing far from the capital for entrenchment bonus. As you can see, they die quickly. Then you just split with your troops and capture the whole entire country, as you can see. Some countries' troops can be killed with submarines, a good example is Libya. So when I land at Benghazi, all the troops in Tripoli will go over the water and be killed by my submarine. And split your troops like I do with Algeria. You put them because of the increased diplomatic actions, but if you want to see which one or like which one you should use depending on a certain time, you should probably go check out Amoris' video which will be in the description. This is multiple attackers. This is a singular attacker. This is an example of flanking. After loss of war, for example, taking over the whole entirety of Africa, you may have a low stability level or high world source trade. To counter this, if you're um, the ideology fascism, you get 1% stability every time you declare war in a country. So using this, you can boost your stability so that you do not collapse. Invading superpowers can be a difficult task, but this can be easily be countered with an aircraft carrier or any type of naval asset if your superpower is quite bad. Just put near the capital and they should panic and you should be able to bring a large stack of troops to just destroy them. But in this case, it was an AI, so I just bring a large stack of troops to the shore so that I can attract a bunch of AI troops to come and go ahead and fight my troops. After that, I can just split and kill all the country. Attacks can be quite annoying and there's a way to counter them. Just split with your troops and gradually take them out from that big stack that you have. Well, not the big stack, but like, if you got know I me, mean, the big stack of troops. Just gradually keep taking them out and the attack would have to follow one small stack and not the large stack you have. After a while, when the attack runs out of fuel, you can put all of your troops back into one large stack without, with minimal casualties. Building two electronic factories, one steel combo factory. I all those things listed below, and also a research train factory wall. Furthermore, you might want to sell all those civilians you get from, from like making the fertilizer factory after you make all the electronic factories, after you sell them to sell those consumer goods to a superpower. Don't sell all of them, but after you've made two civilian factories, build another civilian factory just for yourself. But you need two civilian factories that you can sell to superpowers so you can get extra money from it. If you don't have enough money, invade a small neighboring country and seize all of their treasury so you to build factories. <laughs> 